as Abby's loving and proud father, I'm honored to welcome you all to this very special event, to this impossible wedding. Now what on earth do I mean when I call this event impossible? Let me share with you some short chapters in our family's story. 30 years ago, Barbara and I realized that if we were to have a family, we would have to adopt our children. We journeyed to an obscure city in South Central China, where out of all the thousands of unfortunate baby girls, four-month-old Abby was placed in Barbara's arms. We brought her to her new home in Virginia. Oh, look at that smile. Oh, look at that smile. <laughs> a few years later, when Abby was in elementary school, on the far side of the world, a brave young family decided to leave their home in the Philippines for a better life elsewhere. They ventured thousands of miles south to New Zealand, bringing along their six-year-old son, David. In his new home, David grew strong and bright and eventually decided to go into medicine. More than a decade later, Abby was nearing the end of her university training in nursing. The opportunity arose to do a semester at a foreign university. There were dozens of possible schools. But where did Abby choose to go? To New Zealand. Abby returned from New Zealand to prepare for graduation. David now very much on her mind. But to our surprise, the next thing that happened was David got in touch directly with Barbara and me. He would fly from Auckland all the way to Washington, D.C. without telling Abby. Barbara and I would pick him up at the airport and drive him to Abby's apartment in Charlottesville, Virginia. <laughs> A series of virtually impossible events going back 30 years had to take place before we would all be sitting here to witness this impossible wedding. Yet, here we are. Hello, Hi. my ballerina. I know. <laughs> my David, I'm gonna tell the story again. <laughs> when I knew I was going to study abroad, and mom said to me, just don't fall in love with anyone, okay? I brushed it off because firstly, I thought she was joking. And secondly, because obviously that was not going to happen, except that it did. I did not know how loving someone was supposed to be until I met you. I did not feel incomplete before we met, but once I knew you were meant for me, I could not feel whole without you. After almost seven years of being together now, I can confidently say that in most things, you are the realist and I am the idealist. But when it comes to love, you are the opposite. You are the romantic and I am the cynic. The way that you love is a truly selfless devotion that seems too pure and too natural and too sweet to be genuine except that it is genuine. Your innate tendency to love anyone who is special to you in this wholehearted way is one of the traits I admire most about you. And even if you had not needed to make the grand gesture of moving across the world, I know you would not love me any less fiercely. 
So I promise that I will try and be a partner deserving of that kind of love every day and love you just as hard in return. My turn to tell the story. As soon as you floated into that dungeon of a lecture room, I knew you were something special. You fascinated me from our first encounter due to your incredible intelligence, outwardly confidence, and complete lack of control for your facial expressions. I found myself hopelessly captivated by you, unable to get a grip back on my planned reality of staying in New Zealand. So when I kissed you for the first time, I told you not to think about it too much that nothing would happen between us. I was tremendously fearful for just how deep I'd fallen and the consequences of what that meant. And yet here we are, and as you regularly remind me, you knew. We overcame the time differences, the distance, and three long years apart, all to come to this. Things have finally settled into our collective dream, as if we've achieved the first couple chapters of our lives together. I've been told that I'm an amazing husband for leaving all my friends and family back in New Zealand and following you around wherever the army takes you, but they don't really get it. You are the most wonderfully beautiful soul I have ever known, and you only grow more so with each passing day. You're a ball of light that radiates warmth and love, as you touch and better the lives of everybody around you. And you make everything easy. Life with you is so easy and so efficient, sometimes I feel like we forgot the step that we're supposed to complicate things. And so it's simple. I'm not a great guy for making sacrifices. You don't find a girl that's worth giving things up for. Instead, you begrudgingly follow your heart. You kiss the foreign exchange student and realize that everything else would be meaningless without you by my side every step of the way. Most importantly, I promise to guard your heart, tend to it when it is hurt, and do my utmost to keep it safe because it is the most precious thing in the world to me. I love you and I like you, David Tionko.